hey, 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 this is our battle call. Mess with the horns and you get the devil. Hey, 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 you're not invincible. Mess with the horns and you get the devil. We are the savages. And hey, you are alive, the original. Villains in the night know where to run, know where to hide. We are the savages. We are the savages. I'm filming this on October 4th, the day before my birthday, and you know, the weather's been hot as hell here in New Jersey during the day, but the evenings is finally starting to feel more like fall. And yeah, you just saw me rocking out there. I really wanted to give a special thanks to my uh, former coworker at Dogtopia, Virginia, because two weeks before I quit that job, you know, and I had in Fort Collins for over a year, uh, like we were in the same playroom together with the dogs, right? And they had monitors in all playrooms so we could keep tabs on all dogs, as well as like go on YouTube and like play music or podcasts or YouTube videos or whatever while we were interacting with the dogs. And she got us, she got me really hooked on Ice Nine Kills. Uh, which is a, uh, for those of you who don't know, Ice Nine Kills is a metal band uh, from here in the United States. Uh, they have two entire albums called The Silver Scream. There's a Silver Scream, then there's a sequel album, The Silver Scream 2, Welcome to Horrorwood, as their names suggest. The, this band wrote like entire, like two entire albums just all about horror movies. And like, I've been listening to them like on repeat for the past like 15 months now, ever since Virginia introduced me to them. So, Virginia, I hope you're well. Thank you so much for getting me hooked on Ice Nine Kills because uh, I looked it up and like for this 31 Days of Horror challenge, because Savages is my favorite song from Ice Nine Kills, which I know is a little cliche because, uh, sorry if you guys hear all the background noise with cars and trains going by, but, uh, yeah, uh, Savages is about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I've decided I'm just gonna like go through their whole list of like horror films they like based songs off of for this 31 days of horror challenge because i'm very uncultured on my horror classics like also i've written songs about like friday the 13th and like uh the the nightmare on elm street a lot of other like classic horror films i haven't watched yet so i've decided i'm gonna do so too but anyways the evening's really nice i just want to get outside and take a little bit of a stroll to the convenience store get some snacks and then i'll Go in my house and uh, watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'll see you in a bit. Three hours later. All right, so I just got done with watching the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I can see why like this film sort of paved the way for so many other slasher films to come. And it's like the the whole cloth, like the the setting of it being in rural Texas with you know these teens going on a road trip, and you know there's Sally and her paraplegic brother uh, Franklin who are visiting their grandfather's old farm and they meet these like crazy people with a with masks and chainsaws wanting to eat them they're cannibals just it was a very well made film and I can I honestly I didn't like the, the opening scene with the opening credits was really creepy and I think some scenes like I can see how people in the 70s were terrified of this movie and I think some of the scarier moments like hold up well it's this day and it's like, I, by the way, with classic movie reviews, I always have spoilers, so spoilers ahead. Duh. I just felt so bad for Sally, especially when the third act rolled around where, like, her brother Franklin is just chainsawed right in front of her. And, you know, this film uses dramatic irony where, like, uh, the char or the audience, we, the audience, know more than the characters do. And, like, Sally doesn't know that, like, Leatherface and his cronies already, like, caught her other friends and, like butcher them and are about to eat them then she gets to the house and the creepy old guy is like whacking her the broom and tying her up and and she has a and her, they cut her finger and the well, grandpa sucks on the finger i was just like oh this is really brutal and scary but then like the ending is pretty satisfying though where she gets out safely and the one of the crazies gets run over by a truck like i was, I was just like yes perfect and, you know, I really wanted, before going to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I walked in already aware of the film's political message. For those of you who don't know, like, uh, the way Leatherface and the bad guys, like, uh, kill the, the teens is very reminiscent of the way that butchers kill, like, farm animals like cows and pigs and chicken, like, for their meat and body parts, like, you know, for the meat industry. And I think the film was, you know, it's like... I, I can see why, like, people go, like, vegetarian vegan, because you watch those, like, slaughterhouse videos, and it's just really horrible, like, where our meat comes from. Like, I always knew, like, it's, it involves killing animals, and, like, but it, 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 it's really, honestly very scary, like, how brutal it gets. And it's like, I'm no vegetarian. I, I DoorDash ordered, like, a 
bacon egg burger and a and a side of like chicken wings. I ate it while watching this film. And uh, my main reason, my two like. My two main reasons for not giving up meat is that I just really hate pickiness. Like, yeah, I'm well aware of, like, the stuff that goes on in the meat industry and, like, how a lot of meat places are, you know, damaging the environment. But it's just, I really hate pickiness. I just don't want to be a picky person. I just want to live my life with as little limitations I have to. It's like, hey, if something's good and I'm hungry I'm, and if it's available to me, like, I'm gonna eat it like hey i and it's not like i'm just sitting about just eating meat 24 7 i eat all kinds of foods like i eat meat i eat fruits i eat vegetables i eat grains i'm not much of a dairy person though i eat pizza and eggs and like a uh, non-vegan desserts like ice cream but that's about all the dairy i eat like i'm really not much of a dairy person like i don't like the taste of dairy milk unless it's like you know for ice cream or milkshakes or a dessert of some kind and i really can't stand the smell of cheese. Like, and, uh, here's another reason why I really don't want to go vegetarian or vegan is because I think those, those labels, it's kind of what I see them as nowadays with people who are vegetarian or vegan who are just so pompous and just, like, militant and higher than thou and, like, aggressive and annoying and obnoxious and just, like, self-righteous and judgmental about their views. Like, I can't stand people like that personally. Like, being vegan or vegetarian or pescatarian or keto or paleo or whatever fancy dietary choice you have is a dietary choice, not a cult. And as someone who really hates the smell of cheese, I have found myself getting into more fights with vegetarians over the years I've had from vegans. Because I've seen vegetarians be just as stereotypically militant and preachy and judgmental and self-righteous and annoying as vegans. Right, but the vegetarian, the difference between the two is that the vegetarian will say, like, oh, I just eat cheese, or I only eat cheese, I do eat cheese sometimes, or like, oh, I love cheese too much to go vegan. I start imagining the smell of Parmesan just attacking my nose, and I'm just like, piss off, man. Like, bring me the vegans, at least they're all or nothing. And also with vegetarians, it's like, the dairy industry treats their animals just as cruelly as the meat industry does, and, I, and giving up meat or dairy products... In all honesty, you really do your research on the production of, like, vegan food. It's really not as... It, it's really not as good for you or the environment or the animals as vegans make it out to be. You know, I digress. I know there's a lot of hyperbole in what I just said. I, that's just my little mini rant about, like, why I don't want to go vegetarian or vegan. But it's like, if you're, if you're of that community, if you're someone who doesn't eat meat and or dairy products, like great for you. Anyways, uh, back to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I can understand why this film has been a hell as such a classic over the years. It was a very low production budget, and it was highly influential in both the way it scared people and the way it made you think. So I gotta say that uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre gets a 7 out of 9 stars. It is a really likable film. 4 down, 27 more to go. Thank you so much for tuning in with uh, this series of like the 31 Days of Horror Challenge. On my YouTube channel, subscribe to me here, please. My name is TVB9. You guys have a good night. Stay beastly.